hello and welcome everyone in this video we're gonna go through a uh, diffusion problem all right now right now we're just dealing with molecular transport so i'm gonna ask you guys to pause the video and give the problem a read okay i'm assuming you guys have uh, gone through the problem at least once or at least you guys have skimmed through it hopefully hopefully so let's just uh, read it together shall we now species a what what is species a i i don't care what is species a i, I don't care i do know that it is diffusing okay diffusion diffusion the mechanism of transport molecular transport through a silicon wafer all right in order to have diffusion in order to have diffusion you need two species okay one species has to migrate in the other all right you can't have diffusion in a pure component you cannot have diffuse you cannot have mass transfer in a pure component mass transfer requires multiple components please all right i'm gonna make a note here mass transfer mass transfer uh problems mass transfer problems need multiple components okay because we're talking about migration we're not talking about bulk flow we're talking about migration of species in a bulk species mass transfer needs okay multi multiple components oh, it's, it's my bad sorry uh multiple components okay multiple components now that's that's very important that is very important okay please um keep that in mind and since diffusion is our mechanism there's definitely going to be fixed law now the effective diffusivity of a the effective diffusivity okay we're going to talk about that in a bit can be assumed to be constant i've been given the symbolic expression and now i've been asked to derive the concentration profile the concentration profile of a so let's talk about effective diffusivity for a second effective diffusivity uh in reality like in reality on a microscopic level let me zoom in a bit sorry in reality on a microscopic level uh particles of a are actually taking a very zigzag they're taking a very tortuous path all right they're taking a very weird they're not taking a straight path okay they're not taking a straight path uh because because of uh the structure the chris the um, molecular structure of silicon wafers okay the giant co covalent bonding that's uh, that's the subject of material science so we know that in reality the paths are zigzag the paths are tortuous the paths are tortuous but in order to apply fixed law we need to assume that it's a uh the net the average motion let me draw that the average motion is horizontally straight okay we're taking the average motion it's from uh, left side to the right side okay the average motion is a straight line the average motion is a straight line so hence we in order to account for the diff in order to account for the fact that we're assuming we're assuming that the paths are approximately the average paths are constant we're going to need the effective diffusivity all right the effective diffusivity uh does not take into account the tor uh, i'm sorry it corrects for the tortuous paths all right i'm gonna link some resources some material science resources that you can read in the description all right so you can be smarter than i am on this topic derive the steady state concentration profile so all right we have a uh our coordinate system since it's a flat wafer wafer it's a flat wafer we're gonna be using we're going to be using cartesian or rectangular cartesian or rectangular coordinates cartesian coordinates all right very good so yeah use cartesian coordinates use the equation use the correct equation of change okay in this case our equation of change is going to be for multi-component species use the equ correct equation of change and then finally once you then you're going to have to reduce the equation of change reduce equation of change reduce equation of change i can just all right sorry and then we're gonna integrate then we're gonna integrate our ode okay and then you're gonna use the finally we're gonna use boundary conditions bcs to obtain constants of integration that's just the uh, general procedure that that is just the general procedure use boundary conditions to obtain constants of integration that is just the uh that is just the general procedure that i use to solve transport phenomena problems and um see if this works for you guys see if this works for you guys uh, integration sorry 
constants of integration. So let's start off my equation of change. I've already set my Cartesian coordinates. This is going to be, I've chosen Cartesian coordinates for this problem. And now my equation of change is going to be a mole balance. It's going to be a mole balance on A. I'm using mole balance because I've been given concentrations and concentrations are usually given in moles per liter. All right, they're usually given in moles per liter. That's why I'm using a mole balance. Micro it's going to be a microscopic mole balance. So it should be in the appendices of your textbook, whether you're using Bird Stewart or Lightfoot, Bird Stewart and Lightfoot, or whether you're using Brodkin and Hershey, or whether you're using uh, Gene Coplis, the, uh, the big boys, all right, the big boys. So let me write the equation of change. And that's just going to be, I'm going to write it in the vector form. So the uh, accumulation of species A is just going to equal the in minus out. The in minus out can be written as, the in minus out can be written as the effective diffusivity times the Laplacian of A plus some generation term. And the generation term in this case is non-existent. There's only diffusion, okay? There's only diffusion. And this right here is the diffusion equation. Some people call it fixed second law. I'm just gonna call it the diffusion equation. And it's a very important equation in the study of partial differential equations, diffusion equation. Okay, uh, let's see. So we're gonna assume steady state. We're gonna assume steady state. Boo, bye bye. And the units, let me just check the units for a second. All right, the effective, the diffusivity is usually, usually given the units of meter per second square, okay. Uh, I believe so. All right. So and the uh, units are good. We're good. The, the, the diffusivities usually have the units of meter per second square. All right. Good. Oh, mama. Let's see. What do we have? Mm, all right. So now I'm just going to expand. I'm just going to expand the Laplacian. I'm just going to take the Laplacian, this boy right here, the del squared. I'm just going to write it in its expanded form. All right. None of that. None of that vector calc. None of that vector calc voodoo magic in my class. All right. Cartesian coordinates. I'm writing it in Cartesian coordinates. Please follow. All right. For this problem, I'm using Cartesian coordinates. So hence, the problem has been formulated as such. All right. And now I know uh, I'm, there is no trans. I've not been told that there is any transport. There is not any transport in the y and z direction. So adios, au revoir. All right no no transport no diffusion there's this is a one dimensional diffusion problem no diffusion in y no diffusion in z okay otherwise we would have a partial differential equation and you don't solve you do not solve partial differential equations analytically in an undergraduate level transport phenomena class class that's what the grad school is for that's what grad school is for all right so now our final equation, I hope you guys, I'm going to skip one step. I'm going to skip one algebra step and give you this solution. This right here is my ordinary differential equation. This right here is my ODE, my ordinary differential equation, a second order ODE with respect to the concentration. And now I'm going to integrate this. Now I'm going to integrate it. Upon integration, I'm going to integrate twice. I'm going to integrate twice. And this is the result that I'm going to get. Pause the video and give it a try yourself. I should use, uh, I'm going to use A and B as my constants of integration. I'm going to use A and B. A, X plus B. So A and B are my constants of integration. These are my constants of integration. All right, very good. Very good. Constants of int. All right, good. And now I just have to solve for these constants and two constants. I got two boundary conditions All right now time to use my boundary conditions use boundary condition one use boundary condition one that says at x equals zero the concentration at x equals zero is equal to ca naught and let's see what we're gonna get I'm gonna skip some algebra and I want you guys to try it I'm gonna skip some algebra and give you the result C A naught is going to equal B. I'm skipping some algebra. Okay. Now the second boundary condition. The second boundary condition is going to be, all right, let's see. The concentration at X equals L, the thickness. The concentration at X equals L. All right, what was that? 
There it is. There it is. That's a my schematic. My boss was nice to give me this schematic. So it's just symbolic. I haven't been given any numbers yet. I'm just doing everything symbolically. Once I have my algebraics, once I have my symbolic expressions, then plugging in numbers is just, is just, it, it's too easy. All right. So let's see what, what I'm going to get. Now I'm actually going to do the algebra instead of skipping it. I'm going to do the algebra with you guys. Uh, no, nah, I don't like these. I want my white. Sorry, CAL is equal to A times L plus CA naught. And upon rearranging this, I'm solving for A, by the way. I'm solving for A. Upon rearranging this, A becomes equal to CA sub L minus CA naught divided by Mm, hold up, I'm uh, let me just look at something. Okay, plus. Now this is good. This is good. A is equal to C A L minus C A naught. All right. I ha I have my two constants of integration. So once I now my final result, my final result is just gonna be the concentration as a function of x is going to be equal to the experiment my first constant of integration which is the just the difference in constant concentrations divided by the thickness divided by the thickness of the wafer times x plus c a naught all right very good very good this is my final answer this is my final profile now if i now if i want to find Let's say if I want to find my rate of transport, rate of diffusion. Rate of diffusion is given by Fick's law. Rate of diffusion is given by Fick's law. Okay. What is Fick's law? Fick's law says that the rate at which you're, you're transporting your moles of A per area. This I'm following the notation in Brodsky and Hershey. I'm following the notation in Brodsky and Hershey. Okay. This right here is a flux. This right here is a flux. Is a mole flux. And this is just gonna in the mole flux in the x direction is gonna be equal to the negative diffusivity times the uh, gradient times the derivative of x. And this expression right here, if you perform some calculus, you'll see that this is just equal to this is going to be equal to sorry c a naught c a l minus c a naught c a l minus c a naught uh yes divided by l all right and up, up, upon rearranging this upon rearranging the uh equation my fixed law all right let me just sorry let me just make sure i highlight it for you guys this right here is just fi just fixed law so i'm just gonna after substituting the expression for my derivative my derivative let's see what's the result that i get my molar flux is gonna come out to be my molar flux in the x direction is gonna come out to be d Effective diffusivity multiplied by C A naught minus C A L divided by well L all right and there you have it so once you have the uh, once you have the profile once you have the profile you can get once you have the concentration profile you can answer so many other questions and before i end this video i want you guys to uh, i want i want to emphasize the point that this is identical that this profile is identical to our solution of conduction equation identical to solution of our conduction equation of our heat conduction equation in the previous video that i'm going to link in the description heat conduction problem this is identical the solution is identical which is why transport phenomena is taught in a unified in a unified way because the uh, mathematical expressions that describe these phenomena take the same form the mathematical expressions that describe these phenomena end up taking very similar forms which is why we solve them 
in a in a unified way so yeah guys thank you so much for watching and let me know if you guys have any questions in the if you guys have any questions in the comments all right thank you